So, I'd now like to introduce the first of our advocate speakers. We've got Richard Lowes from UK Energy Research Centre, and he's going to be talking about ways we could heat our homes with electricity. So I'll hand over to Richard. Afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Richard Lowes. I am a researcher uh, with the UK Energy Research Centre, and I'm based in the University of Exeter. Um, I'm an independent researcher, and for the past 10 years, so about the same time as Jenny, I've been focusing on this issue um, of how we get to clean heating um, in the UK, really. Um, and basically, it looks pretty clear that a big part of that has to be moving away from fossil fuels towards electricity. Um, and so I'm going to spend a few minutes focusing on that issue um, with uh, some photos from my own life um, to uh, sort of show you how I've got to this position, basically. So first of all, why electricity? Um, well, the big thing uh, to say is that the UK currently uses uh, gas for most of its heating and some oil as well. And we know to get to net zero, basically you can't be burning any oil or gas for heating. Um, so for, for really over a decade, um, the phrase electrifying, um, electrifying heat has been seen as this really important um, approach to get towards clean heating. Um, and the idea is quite simple. We know how to produce very low carbon electricity. Um, so we can produce electricity from renewables, from nuclear, um, and then you can use that electricity um, to produce heat. Um, and there are various ways that you can use that electricity, and I will go through some of them. Um, but a really important takeaway um, is that to get to net zero heating um, is going to be very, very hard. There is no easy option. Um, everything uh, will involve some sort of work in people's homes, and everything will also involve changes to infrastructure. So we're talking about changes in people's homes as well as changes to the sort of wider energy networks and energy system. Um, there, is, there are some reasons to be positive. So when a lot of the analysis was done, renewables were still quite expensive. Uh, and what we have seen over the past few years is renewable electricity becoming a lot cheaper. And that now means that um, it looks less expensive to get to clean heating, to decarbonise heating than we, than we once thought it would be. Um, so that is a big positive, but uh, it will still cost more um, than it currently costs to heat our homes. Um, and there's a big question um, around how that's paid for. But the good news story, um, as was described earlier, is that uh, you know renewables are getting cheaper and electricity is becoming increasingly green. Um, and this picture is actually um, just off Brighton, um, and that's my sister-in-law, Jo, admiring uh, an, an offshore wind turbine that was commissioned a couple of years ago, and that was when she wasn't being sick off the side of the boat. Um, but that was a, a fantastic trip to really go and experience it and see these amazing things in real life. And um, they're absolutely huge, um, very impressive. So the question on how we actually use electricity to produce um, heating. Heat pumps um, are a really important technology for this. So basically, um, some people have heard of heat pumps. Brief explanation, the electricity that goes into the heat pump um, is used to basically compress heat um, from big areas. So it takes heat from the air uh, or heat from uh, the ground, and it basically squeezes that heat together into a, a smaller space, and it puts that heat into your house. And that's effectively what they do. So in theory, um, for the one unit of electricity you put in, you can get maybe two, three, four, in some cases even five units of heat out. Okay? Uh, Sorry, red card, yes. I don't understand how when it's freezing outside you can take heat from the air. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come back to that question or shall I answer that now? Okay, um, so basically there is heat energy um, in everything uh, down to minus 273 degrees. And um, that's a temperature called absolute zero. Um, and so above that temperature, there's uh, energy moving in the molecules. Um, and so there is energy um, even in temperatures well below freezing, basically. Uh, it's, it's more difficult to get that energy out, um, but it is still possible. Um, and for example, um, air source heat pumps, which take heat from the air, um, do work down to minus 20 degrees. So what you're saying is it could take you the air that's plus one degrees Pump it out at minus one and keep it two degrees for heating. Uh, that's sort of how it works, yes. So um, the system, and this is my back garden, and that's my air source heat pump. Uh, and there's a basically it's a compressor like a fridge has and a big fan, and it sucks in the air, 
uh, onto a large surface area to extract the heat from that. Uh, and, and then from that large surface area, sort of squeezes it together with a compressor. So it, it's a, um, and I won't go into too much detail, um, but it's uh, a refrigerant, so a material that goes from liquid to gas. Um, if you stand in front of the air source heat pump, because it's extracted all of the heat from the air, it feels quite cold, basically. Okay. Um, so the benefit of heat pumps is that they can be um, powered by green electricity. So once you've got your green electricity, you can put it into a heat pump and then you get more energy out than you put in. Basically, um, it's not a new technology. They are used globally at, at scale. Um, it's very similar components to fridges um, and it's basically an air conditioner in backwards. So um, it's not like a, a whizzy new thing. They've been around for a long time. The big difference to a gas boiler um, or an oil boiler, which most of us have, is that they produce um, colder temperature heat, basically. So um, a gas boiler you might have at 70 degrees, so a radiator feels very hot to touch and will scold you. Um, a heat pump will work most efficiently at around 45 or 50 degrees or even a bit lower. So the radiators still feel hot, um, but they don't feel um, red hot like a, a gas boiler system might do. That means that to make them work properly, you have to have more efficient buildings. So all of the stuff that Nick was talking about, about energy efficiency, basically has to happen um, before a house is ready for a heat pump. Um, and the other thing to mention is you will most likely need, or you, you will need a, a hot water cylinder for a heat pump system. They don't produce hot water on demand like a gas boiler does. Um, so you're likely to have to have space for a hot water tank in your house. So that's heat pumps. Uh, and thank you for the very challenging question on that, which I wasn't <laughs> expecting. Um, there are a number of other technologies which can use electricity for heat. Um, so heat networks, which Jenny mentioned, uh, where heat is moved between buildings um, as, as hot water, um, you can use big heat networks on systems, uh, and those are in existence in other countries around the world. Um, there's also storage heating, which has got a very bad reputation, and rightly so. Um, storage heaters often ended up with people having uh, and you can charge these heaters up overnight, and the theory was that they'd stay warm in the day. Um, often that meant that the house got hot overnight and was cold in the day. Um, there are much more advanced storage heaters now, so they may potentially play a role, but you don't get that same efficiency as you do with heat pumps. Uh, there are also simple electric radiators. If you have a very, very efficient flat or a, a relatively small building, um, a simple radiator might be cost effective. Uh, and one of the areas which is really interesting is around um, smart metering, um, and these so-called time-of-use tariffs. So you may have heard of Economy 7 before, where you had a cheaper electricity rate overnight um, and a more expensive rate in the day. Um, you can now get tariffs which vary much more frequently throughout the day, um, allowing you to potentially buy electricity when it's cheap and heating up your house or preheating your house so it stays hot when the electricity is more expensive. And that's what I've done for my house. So for my house, I turn it off between 4 and 7 in the afternoon, um, and it stays warm in that period. And I'm now getting heat uh, through my heat pump um, at roughly the same cost of gas heating. Um, so I just wanted to say, really, we, we can act on this now. Uh, these aren't new technologies, but it, it's a lot of hard work. Um, and this is just the market for heat pumps um, in some of the biggest European countries. Um, and, the, and this is the number of heat pumps sold per thousand households. So this is sort of a, a comparable metric. Um, and you can see that actually the Scandinavian countries uh, and some of Northern Europe um, is way ahead of the UK. So we're actually very much behind in this space. Um, and even in colder countries, uh, heat pumps are being taken up. So hopefully that's, that allays some of your concerns around cold temperatures. Um, hard work's needed for homes um, to, to fit the energy efficiency, but also to fit these systems. Um, they can be quite disruptive. But to go alongside this, if we're moving a lot of our heat from gas to electricity, we'll also need uh, bigger electricity networks, so potentially bigger wires in lots of places, and we'll need a lot more electricity generation. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we are talking about significant increases in the size of the electricity system, um, and that's got to happen at the same time. And of course, the big question is, how do we pay for this? Um, because it will cost more, um, and there are big questions around investment in people's homes and investments in people's networks, and I think that's a really big question to think about. But personally, um, I see many positives to this. Um, you get healthier, warmer homes if you do the energy efficiency. Um, it just feels nicer to be in an energy, effic energy efficient house. Uh, you can make the most of UK renewables. So currently we're importing a lot of our gas demand, around 60% of our gas is imported. If we move to more electricity, we can produce that, renew that renewable electricity ourselves, so huge benefits there. 
Um, and there's something around a high-tech focus for heating that I think the UK can really lead the world in, where we're talking about things like matching renewable supply um, with smart tariffs and with heat pumps, um, with multiple benefits across the economy. Um, I just wanted to say something uh, quickly, finally. Uh, there is um, a big battle going on at the moment in, in the debate around the future of heating in the UK, um, because there are some big interests who basically have a lot to lose. Uh, we have obviously a very big gas industry, um, gas networks, appliance manufacturers and so on. Um, and there has been a lot of resistance to this idea of electrifying heat because obviously there's quite a lot to lose. Um, and we've seen similar resistance in other sectors, so around bigger fossil fuels um, and uh, big industries fighting things. Um, and new ideas and new entrants, uh, such as heat pumps and their representatives, struggle to compete um, with some of the um, lobbying and influencing from the gas industry. And so converting the gas grid has emerged, um, converting the gas grid to run on hydrogen has sort of quite recently emerged um, as this easy, quick fix solution to decarbonise heating that doesn't disrupt consumers. Um, and my personal view is there could be really big benefits to hydrogen as a solution um, because you don't need to do, to do as much work in people's homes. But at the moment, the moment, we simply don't know whether it's possible, um, it's never been done before, and we really don't know how much it will cost. But on the other hand, we do know um, that electrifying heat is possible, um, and we have quite a good idea of how, how much that will cost, um, and various people around the world have already done it, and I've even done it in my own home. Um, so I would say do trials of hydrogen and do them rapidly, but at the moment we need to focus on uh, what we know already works because we just quite simply don't have time to waste um, and that is focus on electrifying heat um, in the most efficient way.